Austin Vitucci, and I play keys and a little guitar in the band. I'm Randy Rafallo. I play bass. I'm James Rutledge, and I'm audio engineer. I'm Jessica McKinney, and I am the vocal director, and I sing lead in BGVs. Uh, I'm Neil Gregory, and I'm the video director. Tell me what your first session was and what you remember about that first session, whether how you felt or what went through your body or whatever, please. Um, <laughs> or nothing. You don't have to have a great answer if you don't want. Okay. Uh, yeah, my first session was Boston. I did two out of the five songs because only two songs had keys. Um, and uh, I just remembered, what I remember is like feeling like I've finally gotten a chance to play with the lab band because you know it, I'd known all the guys for years and saw what they were doing and I was excited to get involved. So that's, that's cool. I remember. That's cool. We'll get back to a little more on that. Let mm -hmm. me hear. You. What about you? My first one was Stevie Nicks slash Fleetwood Mac, and um, I was glad to play on that. I was excited. And music is a thing where. You spend a lot of time at home preparing the parts and that kind of thing, and then you come in and do it, and you're very focused on doing your part. You don't, you kind of hear what other people are doing too, but you're focused on yourself more than anything, just trying to, you know, with the train to come off the tracks, so you got to do your part. And then after it's over, if somebody said, well, how did that go? How did you feel about it? Man, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it was okay, but we're going to have to wait and see because I can't tell, you know. You're so, it, it's just a weird thing to go through. You really don't know how well it went. Huh until it's over. And typically, I, I don't know about everybody else, but when you've done one, you're kind of thinking, man, I don't know, I, I'm not really sure I did well on that. Or, and then when you hear it back, like, oh, that's fine. You know, so it's, <laughs> it seems to always come out better, thankfully, better than worse, uh, compared to your view of it, what you remember from it. So I'm glad it's better instead of not as good. Absolutely. I don't know how, yeah. Uh, I don't remember the very first one I've done. I went to almost all of them, but uh, it might have been Doobie Brothers. Or I, I could have might have not done that first one. But the thing that really surprised me even early on was um, to hear songs that I was familiar with from my youth and stuff. But, you know, you expect to go into it as a cover band project, and you, you expect that. But the quality, right off the bat, was like, it was like I was listening to the original artist, and it was like it was just in modern times with modern equipment. So it was really fascinating kind of grabbed me right away. That's cool. Thank you. My first episode was Steely Dan, and mm. it was highly intimidating because the vocals are not intuitive in the slightest. So I remember walking into that session and being A, nervous because it's my first one, B, nervous because I arranged vocals for something that was really tricky. <laughs> but I'm with, I'm with you. I don't remember anything that happened in the shoot, mm. and then we published it, and I was like, oh, it was great. But I don't have any recollection of what happened, so that was surprising. Um, it's gotten better as I've done more and more, but for sure, that's my, my big memory from the first time. What a daunting first, Steve yeah. Dan. Mm. Yeah, I know, I know. Funky, yeah. funky, Fun. funky chords. Yeah, funky. challenging, yeah, so very cool. Yeah. And what about you? Uh, I was there for the second shoot, so that would have been the Cars. Um, and that's when kind of the video director, We Vandy had asked me in the very beginning, like, hey, do you want to... I'm thinking of doing this thing. I want to get people to record together. And I'm like, sure, this sounds complicated and chaotic and I'll show up and we'll see what we can do. And so I wasn't there for the first shoot. The second shoot, I just remember chaos. I remember we've got all these different camera ops. We're trying not to get into each other's shots. And I think at that time we may have had a jib or not. Like we, it was just a lot of chaos. And I remember going, I don't know how this is going to work. Like this is going to be really difficult to put together maybe in the edit. And at the time I was doing the edits. And so like looking back and seeing Vandy would sit over my shoulder and we'd be like, hey, we want to see this at this time. So we're finding all the layers. And um, I don't know most of the music mm. that we played. I, not my generation. Like, Hence not, why you probably stopped editing. Did yeah, you? Yeah, probably. Like, <laughs> no, he, doesn't know, he doesn't know what to listen to. Um, so I, I wasn't familiar with Cars, Doobie Brothers, or any, really any of our first um, bands or a lot of the bands that we've played. And for me, I've gotten to fall in love with this music. I listen to the lab band soundtracks in my car as I'm driving, and now my kids are falling in love with the same music that I've just recently gotten to fall in love with. So that's, that's kind of fun, because I get to see a little bit behind the scenes of the edits and all that. So to see it all come together from the shoot 
to what he's mixed and then to the edit. It's it's been really um, it's been really fun. I love that. Okay, we're gonna tap into a little cool. bit of everything you guys have just revealed. I want to start you with you, Jessica. Your yep. harmonies are so spot on. The sound, the effects, the blending, it sounds like pre-recorded tracks when mm -hmm. you're listening to it. It's wild. I'm sure the fans want to know how you recreate this, what the process of that is like in discerning what parts to then mm -hmm. teach everyone else or show or reveal or unearth for the mm -hmm. record. So, And the, I think fans also want to know, do you use pre-recorded tracks? No, we do not. I'll just get that out of the way. I right wanted now. a big old no, bag. No. Absolutely not. I think it's so no, no. important to say that out loud. Yes. Yeah, no, we we do our best to recreate them. We have all of the parts uh, represented if possible. And then honestly, Vandy's mixing is a lot of what makes it sound like the original because they're, you know, he's gonna go in and make sure the levels are what they need to be and things like that. Whereas I'm singing at the top of my lungs on a mic. So, you know, but um, the preparation for that is a lot of things. Like it's everything from listening by ear to going in and trying to pull out isolated tracks if I can pull them out and listen to them and go, here, there's three parts here, there's four parts here, there's two parts, whatever that is. And then putting them all together, getting the right people to come in and sing those parts and then doing it all live. So, so to, to ask a deeper question mm -hmm. when it comes to, the, I think it is in the mix then, that when you're hearing it, when we're watching it on a yes. video, yeah. it has, it's not like we're standing in front of the stage being able to hear the nuances that are then brought to the actual mixing of it, right? Right. So that is in the mix. Mm -hmm. But yet you guys are performing live and you sound fantastic. So how has that done so well? Uh, it's the same thing, same exact process. Um, I think James is Yeah, a does James get credit for that? He does, he's a master, so he makes us sound good at the live show and he's got a really good ear for what we're going for on each individual track too. So, I mean, they've both got really great ears. That's really what makes it sound so phenomenal along with incredible musicians. James, do you study that before you're mixing? Like, do you, or do you, tell me how your process works. Yeah, uh, so my, the bulk of my work is obviously at the live show. I do engineer most of the projects and where I make sure we get a good signal to on every track, but then Vandy takes that and actually does the mix that you hear. Um, but on the live show, I really focus in on what he's done in that mix process mm -hmm. and try to recreate that in a live element. So I'll be sitting there for a month or two ahead of the live show every year, mm -hmm. listening to the full set in order over and over and over again mm -hmm. to the point where I can even remember, okay, the next song is this, the next song is this. Mm -hmm. So just really honing in on what Mike has done on those tracks. That's very cool. I had no idea you did that. That's that awesome. <laughs> That's so cool. Isn't wow. it neat? See, do you see? Oh, you guys are fans of each other in so many oh ways. Oh my gosh. So yeah. do you guys see how important it is to share yeah. this kind of thing with the people who are watching? They don't know cool. how yeah. much work you, how the hours that you spend into doing that so that you can anticipate the next mix when you need something yeah, cool. pumped up and something mm -hmm. quiet and mm -hmm. some effect on something. I mean, yeah. it's a big deal. Yeah, I, I, I sorry, I'm putting words on. Getting all excited. <laughs> all right, <laughs> Randy. You're just as passionate. <laughs> That's great. Um, share when you knew that the lab band started to really pick up steam. You know, it, we, obviously we watched the view counts and there have been times when things grew slower or faster, you know, it kind of waxes and wanes a little bit, but you know, you see those, those things taking off. One of the things, I wasn't ready to answer this, but it was uh, Waiting for a Girl, a foreigner song, yeah. beautiful mm -hmm. song. Mm -hmm. That one, I noticed when its views were still low, I could kind of see it taking off. It was growing faster than the others. And I thought, wow, this, this thing may really do something. Wow. And I'm talking where it may have only had a couple hundred thousand views and now it's 21 or 22 million. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but there was a period early on when you could kind of see that happening. So yeah, that's probably the best answer to your question. That video gave it away for me more than anything. Something is happening here. And it's, it's brought attention to all of the, the rest of the catalog. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because people see that and then one wait. hit that goes viral essentially yeah. and then it elevates right. the whole thing. Yep. Can you pinpoint what happened? We don't know. <laughs> we, do, we, we, do. we have tried. <laughs> we have searched so, blogs. We've tried to see like did it get posted somewhere. Isn't it fascinating? It, it's hard to track, yeah. I think it's actually, you know, it, it's um, the algorithms that the mm -hmm. social media sites have. Mm -hmm. We don't know what those triggers are. Uh, and even if they were sitting here to explain it to us, we probably couldn't fully understand what, you know. <laughs> so there again, we can't recreate that, but I don't know what caused that song to mm. take off or what mm. got it to the level that it could kind of become viral, if you want yeah. to use that word, which is sort of overused now, but yeah, it really yeah. took off. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not the kind of song though that goes viral. Yeah. I agree, it's I agree. Song. It's all never been my favorite, if I may it's say it, yeah. Song, but <laughs> for all of the songs we've done, for that one to go viral, it's, 
You wouldn't have picked no, that no, one. It is no. not the one yeah, I would have picked. picked like, no. I don't Boston. know. Yeah. Well, that's not uh, Ben or oh, something. Oh, no. I was going to say Boston. No. <laughs> I mean, that <laughs> is. But that opener, yeah. But wait for a girl. It, oh, good. It's good, but it's just it's a little. You know, yeah. Well, no. it's very chill. Okay. Neil. Yes. You know, you actually might play the biggest role of all, if I even may say that. I mean, I, I know that's hefty because yeah, we've got cool. Mike, who's really is. Uh, yeah, know. he's the one. <laughs> but in this particular way that yeah. Lab Band's taken off and the, the the medium that you all use, yeah. right? So yeah. your direction, I guess I can't say editing, but yes, editing? Uh, in the beginning, okay. some of the editing, but that's that has, okay. he's, he's taken that and rolled with it. Okay, so maybe I'm gonna retract my my yeah. comment. <laughs> I'm okay. great with that. That's totally fine. Because <laughs> um, I'm learning a lot here. Yeah. I, I, what I'm trying to drill down into is capturing the details of a song that brings yeah. it to life, and making the song the star is the video joy. It is, I, in my opinion, yeah. to see because of the discernment of the parts that really make a song a song, yeah. and the memorable licks and the memorable harmonies yeah. that everyone knows and sings yeah. to. Um, so do you think about that when you're doing your job to let fans into that part of the experience? That is the process that's frontline for them. There's a whole new community out there that's yeah. watching it on this screen or, or this screen, sure. right? Sure. So I guess I'm just I'm asking you to let, again, fans into yeah. that process as yeah. the video guy. Yeah, our goal as the video team, we've, we've kind of figured out, um, we figured out how we're gonna be about maybe a year into it is we we don't want to be seen. We want to be behind the scenes as best as possible. We're trying to like hide each other. I'm like, if you, if someone's in your shot, like raise your hand, we're not going to start filming until all the camera ops are out of the way. And that's for a reason. We want the music to shine. And so we don't necessarily go in and go, hey, we need to make sure that this one is going to be highlighted. We're learning this music for a lot of us just the same as a viewer is for the first time. So we're coming in going, I don't, I'm not sure which one's gonna be the most important. Me and Vandy will talk um, before shooting. I'll be like, hey, who's like my, gotta make sure we have to get, you know, who's gonna rip out this awesome guitar lick or keys or like drums, something like that. So we'll kind of know the ones that we need to make sure we've got maybe our most experienced camera ops on. Um, and then from there, our goal is to get coverage. So that if there's little um, minute things that he, uh, Vandy as he's editing, wants to be able to put together, or like, hey, I wanna highlight this little part, I think that's what's so unique about Lab Band is that you've heard this music. You've heard this music for years and years and years and like, oh, it took me back to this memory. But the visual, that's the part that's really cool is because you're going, oh man, I don't know if I've ever heard that before, but you're seeing the audio and the visual. That's what's really unique is he's able to, as he's doing the mixing, be able to put the visuals alongside of it. That's a new experience that we didn't get when this music came out um, all these years ago is we didn't get to visually see it. Now we do, and we get to be intentional with going, you're not only gonna see it, but you're gonna see it like up close and personal and like you're gonna fall in love with how fast their fingers are moving on the guitar and all that. So our goal is to get out of the way and just let the music shine as best as it can. It's cool that you're part of the band though, when you think about it. Oh do you gosh, play any yeah. instruments? No, uh, oh, yeah. I don't. <laughs> Isn't that cool? I, I you sing. do? Yeah, but I, I'm Maybe not. a little piano. But to get, you, <laughs> to, get yeah. to use your video prowess, your expertise in, in this project yeah. is pretty stinking fun. I'd never thought that this is would be where we are right now, 10 years later. I thought, okay, yeah, we'll do a few episodes and we'll see what happens. And even when we carried on for a few years, I thought, all right, well, I wonder when this will stop. I'm still wondering that 10 years later to go, I don't, this, this shouldn't work. Like this is all volunteer people coming together for the love of music all these years later. All of my camera ops are people who some have video experience, some are just coming because they love music. We're not like this super professional group of people that come together to make this awesome product for the product. We just, we love music. And I think what is maybe unique is we love each other. Mm -hmm. Camera ops are caring for one another. Like this is a family of people and it shouldn't work 10 years later. Right, like there's just a lot of humility that comes into this mm -hmm. that, I don't know, I'm, I'm grateful and humbled to be a part of something that um, has continued for all of these years. And um, yeah, it's, just, it's, fun to, it's fun to be a part of that family. We're, we're gonna talk about ego because it's gonna be a recurring theme. It's really interesting, <laughs> lack of ego. Yeah. Boston, I wanna, I wanna ask you first, multi-instrumentalist, I, I love that title. Do you love that title as much as I think that's super cool? <laughs> Look at the style of this. <laughs> Uh, I don't mind it. <laughs> it is what you I are. I mean, it's sort of accurate. Yep. 
<laughs> no, I love it. In the, in the most, yeah. Well, is it, I, I just wonder, maybe you're just so used to it, that's just who you are, right? But is it validating for you to be able to flex all those muscles mm. musically to have it recognized by Mike and then utilized in lap band? Yeah, uh, yeah. Because, well, I only play, I haven't really branched out in lap band. Like, I'm mostly a keys player. That's what you mostly see me doing. Uh, and I play a little guitar here and there. So, in lab band, that's about it. Um, it could be cool to try something different. So maybe uh, that's not, so maybe validating this. isn't even the right word. I guess what, I, I'm trying to put your, your key parts even, though. Oof. Again, it goes back to like, what gets featured on that video. People mm. can appreciate your keys in a way that typically keyboardists, there's a lot of stuff people don't get to see mm -hmm. behind the keyboard. Yeah. Yeah, keyboard was like the not cool instrument. <laughs> Honestly, uh, in the 70s, 80s, like, yeah. well, 80s are not cool. <laughs> well, based on your interpretation. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's cool because, you know, everybody will ask, well, not everybody, but, you know, people have asked me, why'd you pick piano when you were learning? Like, why'd you learn keys? Like, it's, like, why did you learn guitar or drums, one of the cool instruments? So I think it's kind of cool to be able to showcase keys the way we do. Mm -hmm. And uh, to show that it is, in fact, very cool. <laughs> <laughs> What's the most complicated song you do? Ooh. Oh, for me? Um, probably uh, Call Me the Breeze by Leonard Skinner. It's oh. probably the hardest, most complex piece I've had to learn. Um, so. Okay. Is there any is there any particularly challenging moment in a live show, for example, where you're like, oh, dang, I got to bring my... Woo! Got a beef. No. Firing in all cylinders. No, because the live show, it's you just the adrenaline's running, mm -hmm. and you're just like, get up there and have a good time. Whatever happens, happens. Okay. You just gotta trust the chops and just, you know, get out there and do what you know how to do. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But what about during a session? Is there a part like, oh crap, I can't, I gotta nail this. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> all, of all of them. Yeah. All of them. <laughs> I mean, the pressure's on to get Every it perfect, time. especially <laughs> you know some of the. Key solos, like, you know, I try to grab it note for note if I can. And, yeah. And so, yeah, there's, for sure there's pressure. Especially yeah. with, with people who know the music, they're going to know if you played it right or wrong. Mm -hmm. I would think for each other, there's pressure. I'll to also add, music. this is not an easy thing to do from a videographer. We are in your face. Oh, it's that's not true. Like to add another just layer. playing keys in a room and they're just, this isn't a, just a recording studio. You have a camera that at times is within your three foot personal space as you're trying to hit a lick perfectly on keys, knowing that there's someone recording every single move that you do. That adds a level to um, the recording process that I don't know if a lot of people take into, I mean, I, I think that as I'm recording going, one, I'm very close to you, <laughs> two, that's daunting. Like we're right here and you have three takes or else basically. Well, maybe like, it doesn't bother them. We should ask you, does that bother yeah. you, Jessica? Uh, it did initially because it was, don't look at the camera. Don't look right at the camera. And I'm like, it's in my face. How do I not look at the camera? So you're looking just off to yep. the side of the camera, but not actually at it. It's gotten more normal as we've done it more and I've been part of more episodes, but initially, oh yeah. It was intimidating yeah. for sure. <laughs> and that's one of the things that Vandy usually warns people about for a new guest or yeah. somebody that comes yeah. in for a first time. Hey, there's going to be camera people right up it, while you're playing, almost touching you, <laughs> you know, that close. And it's a little unnerving, you know, so yeah. people are not used to it at first. But after a while, you kind of get used to it and it still puts a little pressure on it. It makes it makes something hard a little bit harder mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. have people that close to you and you can't. And I'm going to hit this guy if I, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. 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 What do you, let's, I'd love to hear from all of you on this question. What do you think has been the most surprising thing about Lab Band's journey so far? That we haven't run out of music yet. Yeah. <laughs> really great songs keep coming up and we're still going. And I know we have artists who have like giant repertoire and we could do Led Zeppelin forever and ever and ever. I get that. But trying to narrow it down to the ones that we think people want to hear and not running out of those things and still having yeah. more and more to come back to, we could play for years. So I did wonder who gets to pick the songs that bring, because I feel like you have to pick the songs that bring the most goosebumps for people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think Vandy's really good at that. He's, he's the guy that picks most of them. Although 
I will say when he asks you to sing something, he's asked me before, you know, what, what do you want to do? What do you think yeah. you would fit really well for that kind of thing? So we do have some input, which is nice. That's cool. Yeah. Anybody else? What, any thoughts on what's the men the most surprising? Um, I guess just a combination of the longevity of the project and mm -hmm. then just the fact that every, every, every project we do, <clears throat> every session we do, everybody comes in with their A game. And like the other guys were saying earlier about pressure, I think they just have so much respect for what's going on yeah. and, and the music that went into it and, and all mm -hmm. that. I think people would be surprised. You know, we do three takes and we take the best of those three takes. You'd be surprised how good each one of those takes are. Yes. You could almost yes. do any one of those takes, especially as time's gone on. People have come in just super prepared. So, um, yeah, just the longevity of the project and, and just the dedication to excellence. And that yeah. is always what yeah. amazes me. Yeah. I think in a bigger, maybe a more conceptual way of stand back and look at the lab band, it's very easy to see now with things the way that they are that, hey, you can do something cool on YouTube or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it can get a lot of views. That's known now. Yeah. Mm. We have to go back 10, 11 years and think, wow, I wonder if that would work. I mm. wonder, mm -hmm. would anybody really care? And I think that was a question when it kicked off originally is, even if this stuff is good, what's it going to do? I don't know. It was kind of an unknown thing. So I, I would say that for me, that's the most surprising thing is that the audience is there, the love for music is there, and there have been the appreciation to the comments and the love of people. So many people drive to the show a long, long way. It's incredible. There are more people, I think, who drive to it and come a long way than there are local people who, who attend right here. <laughs> For a YouTube channel. I know. <laughs> what is this? It's that's amazing. That's and that's amazing. what I'm talking about. That's why it's the most surprising thing. We just didn't, I don't think anybody, especially in the beginning, would have, would have thought that this was possible. That's, yeah. you know, I don't know what the number is now, but it's over 50 some million views or whatever for all the songs. That's, That's a crazy. lot. And people attending the shows and every year, every six months, you can feel and see more interest than there was. So it's continuing to grow. Mm. And it, it was never about the views. That's what's so interesting. When we first started this thing, we just wanted to record it because we thought it would be cool, right? Like we wanted to record music that we would have fun doing together and we'll put it on YouTube. And if people like it, cool, that's great. But it was never about the views. And then all of a sudden, a couple of them blew up and we were like, well, that's cool. And even now, I can I can say this fairly confidently, it's still not about the views. It's the love of the music and it's the love of doing it and playing these songs and recording them together as a group of people. That's what is probably the life driving force of the Lexington Lab Band is the people side of it. The views are great. We love the community that we have. Like, don't want to discount that. Right. but. Man, if a, if a video bombs and it didn't really get the views we want, we still had a blast. And that's what's really fun about that. I think something that I loved in the comments of, from the survey that we sent out, which was you all talking about gathering in the back room before a live show, what you really yeah. loved about the sense of community, right? Dinner and prayer at every live show, a family band, all coming together to bring each unique talent to one song mm -hmm. and the lab band story. Um, and I love also how, the, Laban is a video or a visual jukebox. I thought that was a great, oh. a visual yeah, jukebox. Cool. Like yeah. what a cool way to describe mm -hmm. it. Not for the money or recognition, but to simply pay respect to the people who inspired us to be musicians in the mm. first place, to recreate the songs with the utmost accuracy. Does this say anything about our culture that, that it's tapping into such emotion? And I, I was just thinking about like, what is it about our world now versus the world that maybe you're stirring emotions for? Yeah. Some of you guys weren't even born, but mm -hmm. it's bringing people back to a very simple place or a very joyful place from their childhood, mm -hmm. the way these songs are landing mm -hmm. on people. Could you speak to that at all or any thoughts on that? Story matters. Story connects with people and the story of us coming together. But it's also every, if you read into the comments of all these people, I remember the first time I heard this, Oh, I was in my car in 1965 or 72, and man, I'll never forget that. Or this next person goes, oh, I went to that concert, and it was live. And so these people are experiencing this music, not for the first time, but they're, they're remembering the, like, what their life was like in that moment, in that warm summer day that they listened to that song for the first time, they get to re-listen to it again and relive those moments. And that's that's how we connect is, is through the story. So we're, we're reconnecting people back with the story of their life when they first heard the song. Well said. 
And I think the reason that that works is because the songs are, are very close to the originals. Yeah. You can have a great version of a song that's different and people would still appreciate it and maybe even appreciate it more in some ways, but not like that, not, not the reminiscing, mm -hmm. um, the, the connection with 25 years ago. I think the songs have to be very authentic in how they're put together vocally, the yeah. layers, the production of it, all the stuff that Vandy does. And I want to reinforce kind of, you know, several people have said it's out of the love of music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's that love of music for the musicians to sit at home and learn those parts mm -hmm. and try to get the music. Because if you don't, it might be close and it still might be good, but it wouldn't make what Neil just said happen. Mm -hmm. It has to be really close. And nobody would do that if they didn't love music. I, I spend, I, can, I don't know about everybody else, but I spend hours and hours really digging and trying to get as close as I possibly can. And I think that if, I know that everybody does that to some level, and if they didn't, I don't think this thing that we're talking about yeah. would happen for people. It, would, it might still be a good version, yeah. mm -hmm. but it wouldn't touch people the way that this does. Yep. Yeah, usually you're told to make, a, make this great song your own. Yeah. And in this case, the magic is, is, is pouring your heart and soul into it, but yeah. making it as close to the original as possible, because that's what people sing to. That's what people know. And it's not the same song if it doesn't have that guitar solo yeah. or that keyboard yep. trick. It just doesn't, or that yeah. background vocal. Oh, yeah. It's true. Austin, is any of this hitting you in a way, or is this all like weird talk? Well, <laughs> you know, I, I'm, the, I'm the one you're talking about who wasn't born. Uh, Same. Well, you know, you know, I don't know. I feel like when you're like in your teens is when like you really start to develop your own musical taste. So like these, these guys who are hearing these songs, this, this is what they were listening to when they were young, when they were in their teens, when they were getting their freedom when they first started driving, uh, when they're, you know, dating, whatever it is. So hearing those songs takes them back to that spot in their life, maybe not necessarily this year, because it was simpler. And you were on a tricycle then. I know, I was, so, how is it, so how is it fun for you? I not? was 20 years free wolf. <laughs> Cut that out. That's weird. <laughs> No, but I do wonder what makes it then fun for someone like you. I mean, there's yeah, a lot of folks. I mean, there. I just, well, so, <laughs> you know, a lot of the guys in the band, uh, they were around when the times was when you would buy an album or something like that. And those are things that I don't really haven't gotten to experience because I can stream anything I want mm. at the click of a button. Like back then you had to buy an album and there was so much appreciation for an album. Mm -hmm. The albums aren't really a, a thing anymore. Yeah. So it's just... It's cool to kind of compare how listening to music has changed and how uh, developing your, your personal tastes have changed. Mm -hmm. I've already asked about investing your personal time. I didn't, you brought that up about the investing. Because a lot of people would go, why on earth would you invest this much personal time? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love of music, Yeah. Mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. There's nothing more than that. Mm -hmm. It's love fun of music. to get together. We love the music. We love honoring the artists. That's why we do it. That's it, it's simple. I like the people. Yeah, they're great. Like the, who we get to record with and like the special guests that get brought in. Like, yeah. it's really fun for me to have our camera ops, like have that community. Like there's the lab band community of musicians. I don't want to discount that. But as someone who gets to kind of lead that video team, we also have a group of community of people there that that's, that's why I get to do it is, yeah, I, I love the music that we get to listen to, but I also love the people that are behind the cameras right now who like, come alongside, spend a night to record this music. It's it's the people, because yes, we record really well. But when those cameras are done rolling, there is so much laughter and there is so much like camaraderie and friendship happening. That That's what, for me, that's what I love. Yeah, it's fun to be challenged, I think. You know, mm -hmm. this is, the lab band challenges you and, it, yeah. and that cultivates personal growth, uh, you know, musicianship. Uh, I'm a better musician because of the lab band, not only mm -hmm. Because of the songs I've had to learn, uh, but the, the people around me, the musicians around me, like it's just, it, it grows you a lot, mm. musically and personally. And who can really say that? How many times do we have in our lives mm. that we can say that, that, that we're growing and getting yeah. better mm -hmm. because of who we're around? Mm. Early on, and everybody can probably, that's been in bands, relate to this, when you're young especially, and their egos and people are not mature yet, mm. there's a, 
everybody kind of wants to do well and they want you to do well sort of to a point but not better than you know and yeah. there's this yes. jockeying for position and mm -hmm. control of the unit and all of this kind of thing people don't truly in that situation want you to be your best always mm -hmm. and in fact sometimes if you're doing too well you know somebody might might take offense to that this is the only thing that i've ever been a part of like this where everybody wants you to be your best and to do your best and bring your best and get better and and lift you and support that as much as i've never been in another musical unit even though some of them were, were good that i can really say that fully about but it's it's true with this you're you're allowed the space and encouraged and lifted up to be the best that you can be i think there that's a from what I know about Mike, that's a testament to him finding, letting you, wanting you to shine in each of your given ways. Mm -hmm. And you're, that's really well said the way you put it that way, because there's no, it doesn't seem like there's any jealousy. It's, it's, mm -hmm. and you are encouraged to keep, to shine. I mean, every yeah. single person's encouraged to shine. And in band environments, I hate to say this, but it's, it's not always that way. It's, it's usually counter to that a little bit. Mm -hmm. There's, mm -hmm. it just gets messy sometimes and, and maybe mm -hmm. not in every band, but, there is that um, competitiveness, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and, and sometimes people, I don't know. No, mm -hmm. that's Th real. This is a good thing. You feel yeah. lifted up and supported to yeah. do and be your best. Yeah. Do any of you, a show of hands, feel validated that you're in lab band or feel like you are, or is, are you guys so confident that you're like, I, I should be in that lab band? <laughs> 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 no, I, 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 I asked the earlier group, like, is there any part of like just the pressure to mm -hmm. to hit it every single time and be asked back? You know, mm -hmm. I, I, you guys are such a key, all, a key part of it. I, I was just curious because mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of people outside this circle who would mm -hmm. love to have a chance to play. Yeah. And sorry, they just don't cut the mustard in some way. Mm -hmm. Is that true? It, I don't know that it's necessarily even about being good enough. Um, it's it's. Is this cut alive when you play it? Like, are you like, are you the person mm. who's going to make this feeling happen for somebody else? Mm. I would I would say this for every single person in here. If it's not them, it's fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what makes this so unique. Is if Jess isn't yeah. the right person to sing on a song, yeah. Vandy and or Vandy, Randy and Austin both have not played keys or bass on every single tune. And they're great with that mm -hmm. because that allows another musician to be able to use their talents and their gifts to be able to play that song to the best of their ability. Again, that's what makes this so unique. You're not the front singer all the time and you're great with that. Like that's that's not normal. It's either you or the highway in most <laughs> Where does that come from for you, Jessica? Just, it's like, it's okay. I don't need to sing lead on every song and nor do I want to. I mean, we have so many talented people. It would be highly selfish of me to just mm. be like, yeah, I need to do this every time. I just don't feel that way. We have too many great people who could come in and nail the same parts that I could. Mm. So why not give them the opportunity? Because then they get to join all of this, right. which is, I mean, it's an honor. So I want them to be a part of it if they can. Is it not the secret sauce that every single one of you has that attitude about, hey, it's not ego here. It's, it's, a, it's a culture it's, yeah. that, mm, that's yeah. been cultivated yeah. yes. by a strong leader yes. who's yep. humble. Yes. I think that has a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think he's a key part as the fan. I told this first group this too. The fans who are watching this mm -hmm. project, this is for them, right? Yeah. yeah. Do and, they all know? Do they know he what models, Mike... He models that for us. So it's right. easy to fall yeah. in behind right. that and see that this works. Mm -hmm. And I think, again, everybody could say, well, this is great to be a part of and it's fun. Mm -hmm. Part of the excitement is to know that, that this tribe is 70 or 75 mm -hmm. people deep right now. Yeah. It's getting deeper. Mm -hmm. That's cool. If it was 10 people and it had always been 10 people, it would not be this. No. I think it's great no. to have other people. That's exciting for me. It's exciting yeah. to for somebody to share that role and, and to, again, I, I said before, they want you to be your best, to bring your best. That doesn't mean holding on to, to a position and saying, this right. is mine. That means letting somebody else, yeah. Yeah. that was given to me. I need to give that, again, just as well to anybody else and, and encourage them to be their best. Yeah, yeah and one of the things that Vandy is so good at is he is able to see more than just the potential, but like what you could do before mm. sometimes you even see it. Going back to Steely Dan, yeah. when he asked me to do those vocal arrangements, I was nervous and going, are you sure? 
you sure you want me to do that? And as it turns out, it was great. And I'm so thankful I'm here. I did not see that in myself initially. And I think pretty much all of oh, us yeah. could probably say yeah. that. He just does a really good job of seeing what could be and helping you get there. Yeah. So. It makes me think of like my favorite high school choir teacher. I know, right? band director. I know. Yeah. And you guys get to have that as an adult. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's special. It's unusual. This whole project probably mm -hmm. makes you feel like you've got moments of middle school or high school oh, in yeah. joy. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And yeah. you get to do this mm -hmm. as an adult. Yeah. yeah. And who knows for how long? Exactly. Nope. So any final thoughts or anything as you were preparing for when you came here, if you even knew what you were going to be talking about? <laughs> um, anything that you said, gosh, I really want to make sure fans know this about Black Band. It's the most satisfying uh, musical thing probably I've done. This is the music of my childhood, and there is something mm -hmm. satisfying about playing the music that inspired you to play an instrument or, or be involved. However. So it's fun to go do this stuff. And, and um, I wouldn't even, you mentioned the word validating. I don't really feel like I totally belong in that. I don't feel like I deserve to, to be able to do this. I'm happy that, that it works. And I kind of feel like, well, I'm just fooling people or sliding along. I hope <laughs> they don't catch me, you know. But um, I feel very lucky to be doing this, to be, to be again, given this. Because that's what it was. It's, yeah. it's not mine. It's somebody gave me an opportunity to do this. And mm -hmm. it's wonderful. And I don't deserve it. I'll hear, he'll hear this a lot and he'll hate that people are talking about him as like the person who leads this thing. I will say, he's very good about not isolating within the lab band. It can mm -hmm. feel like as the leader, and everyone will say this, it's, it's V, it's V, it's V, it's V. I don't disagree with that at all, except V leads by bringing others into mm -hmm. all of the decision making that's happening from, hey, I'm thinking about this song, what do you think? It's highly collaborative. Mm -hmm. And again, that, that's a testament to him and how he wants people to win, right? Mm -hmm. Like he, he wants the songs. Yes, we want the songs and like hold accountability to like make them the best they can be. But every single episode is how he can help that person win, how he can help those people win in this musical trait to help others grow as a musician. Like I know we had a big old shoot at Sweetwater this past week and it was stressful and all this. He walked away not because like, wow, what a great experience we were at this place. He loved the fact that we were real people. Like he loved, he was like, man, just bringing people together to play this music. Like he doesn't lead this team in isolation. He doesn't lead this team as like, it's all on his shoulders. He brings people around him um, and elevates them um, like to the same position that, you know, he can have musically, which is really, really humbling to see that and then know that we've been invited to have an opportunity to do the same thing in our own specialties. It's a testament to the to the win of diversity, yeah. or diversity at large, yeah. and it's really special to see mm -hmm. it. And it's yeah. I think you guys are a great microcosm for the rest of the world to even watch and learn mm -hmm. and be inspired by. Mm -hmm.